do our podcast coming to you live and direct from the lab on this beautiful night ladies and gentlemen we're cracking into the house season two is moving and you know as we always do we want to give a big shout out to everybody who checked out the last show everything is available on our youtube channel SQR podcast. Of course, the music you're hearing in the background is available on our SoundCloud, School Rosenberg Radio. Go check that out. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of things moving in the house. You see the table have some coutrements on the table. We got some really interesting things to talk about. So I know you're like, yo, what's going on tonight? We're going to move something exotic tonight. However, you know how I normally start the show. I want to give a big shout out to everybody that's in the house. Shout out to Manny behind the camera. Hi, Thank man. you for being here. Big shout out to my boy E-Dub in the back holding us down. Bong, bong, bong. Big shout out to Ellie bong, and my bong. boy Cheese in the peanut gallery. Yo, thank you for being here. Big shout out to my boy Maximilius in the back. Yo, just holding it down. Bong, bong, bong. Because tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's just about the connection and the movement. Why I am honored to be at the table at the SQR podcast with my boy Tony Walker and my man Brian Nelson from Bellissimo. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boom, 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 boom. Bong, bong, bong. Wow, guys. I mean, when Max and I sat down and we were brainstorming and, you know, enjoying a couple of cigars, he was like, dude, these guys need to be here. You need to hear their story. You know, and and Max was like, you know, a very strong advocate to, you know, wanting to get that out. And then when we did a little research and realized what you're all about, it's like that type of story needs to be told. Mm -hmm. So I got to be honest with you. It's an honor to be in your presence. It's an honor to be looking at your product right here in front of me. I mean, although hey, I'm rocking the SQR podcast right now, I kind of want to just, you know, but I'm going to hold, you know, hold strong to the fort and rock that. But let's just jump into this real quick. Tony. Yes. The catalyst behind Bellissimo. Mm-hmm. As we were doing in the pre-interview, do me a favor. Why don't you let my guests know who you are, what you do? Um, I'm Tony Walker, a, a founder of Tony Bellissimo Clothing. Um, ex-athlete that's how me and max came to become friends and oh, i ended up here great stories coming up yeah that's yeah, what, yeah. That's what that means <laughs> oh i got a lot of stories with that guy but you know we can't, we can't tell that off here but uh yeah. <laughs> but um <laughs> he's funny we met like in 1990 okay both of us fresh out of college and, and going to uh, play in the nba uh, camps that's how we met and been friends ever since so make a long story short getting to here he told me you had this, this great setup here. And he said, you need to be here. My man can help you out. So that's how I ended up here. Bong, great energy, mm-hmm. great yeah. energy. Yeah. My, how did you, you know what? Introduce yourself to my guests. Let them know who you are and how you're affiliated with Bellissimo. I'm Brian Nelson, uh, VP plus Director of Operations. And uh, how I'm affiliated with Bellissimo is that when Tony conceived the idea, you know, me and him had been in the music business beforehand. Okay. So uh, when he conceived the idea, he was like, B, you know, I, I would want you to take this travel with me. You know, walk this road with me. It's going to be Ooh. long. It's going to be treacherous. Ooh. We can go through some ups and downs. Yeah, I like, like where this you know, is going. If anybody was going to be in the trenches with me, yeah. I'd want you. So Ooh, I like, I like that. that. I was like, yeah. I like no that doubt. because we need, we need no supporters doubt. in our corner. And, you know, this, this podcast is also that show, that little show that could because of the supporters in our corner. So I can definitely empathize mm-hmm. to having the staff and the crew and, the, you know, the, that do is in the trenches with you on that. So as we get ready to jump into this podcast, basically what I do is my guests know what's, what's about to happen. We're going to dissect Tony mm-hmm. yeah. and find out, you know, what, what was the journey like to hear and what your impact's going to be and how you came into the picture and what, how your journey and the impact what we want to meet. So let's just jump into this real quickly. Okay. What was the family makeup like, Tony? Um, well, right now the family makeup is just me and Brian, and we. Now I'm talking about back in the day, growing up. Oh, back up. in the day. Yeah. How did how did that start out? What was, oh, what was as a like, kid. Yeah. What was oh, that? Man. Let's go. Let's get granular, wow. bro. Let's wow. go. Wow. So, because at the end of the day, all that. <laughs> yeah. Came to this. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And that's what yeah. this podcast is about. I yeah, want to get right. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> my story as a kid grew up, you know, grandmother, mother raised me, you know, one bedroom apartment in the hood and, and found a way out through sports. Okay. Through basketball. And, um, yeah, let's not fast forward too quick here because that's I, too f- you know, you're going too fast right there. Because, uh, here's uh, what I, here because when you said grandmother and mother, yeah. father's not in the picture. No. Mom and grandmother are holding you down. Yeah. Somebody had to be on you. 
to be on the way you would, and the fact that you didn't resist or you accepted that. So I want to I wanna really, because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people growing up in our society right now mm -hmm. under the same circumstances. So okay. sorry for interrupting, but let's reset right, well, this and go again. Okay, you know, raised by two women, but the men figure in my life was like basketball coach um, Okay. in high school. Well, this guy was <clears throat> really built on positive energy, doing the right thing. Who's, who's this guy? Uh, his name was John Richardson. John Richardson. Yeah, they call him Pot. That's his nickname. P.O.T.? P.O.T. Oh, my God. Big shout out to Pot. We respect you <laughs> on Score Rosenberg Radio. <laughs> Yo, we support you 100% Pot. So did, did he know the impact he was making on your life at that time? Or just, just was he just doing his job? He probably was doing his job, but he knew all of us, you know, need a male figure. I also had another mentor named Melvin Sharp. Okay. That was a security guard in the school. Oh, and wow. He would, yeah, so he would keep us guys off the street. Like basketball practice over now, but you got a whole night left ahead of you. So Melvin would do stuff with us, take us bowling. What? We would go camping. We would do all types of stuff. On his dollar, who would fund? On his it? dollar. On his dollar. It was about Yo, seven of us. Let's look in the camera right here and just big shout out. What's his name again? Melvin Sharp. Melvin Sharp. Pot. Yeah. Big shout out to you guys for being, you know, those guys out there. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they, they didn't have to do that. No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. Wow. Just, so you <clears throat> grow. So what, what, was it brothers and sisters in your family, or just only child? I was wow. the only child. My brothers and sisters were my friends. Wow. That's how. I, and and the thing was, in retrospect, as a man, I knew what they was doing. Now they was keeping us off the street. At the time, we think we just having fun. Mm. But now he was keeping us off the street, away from all the craziness that was going on out there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you know that was a great thing he did. He didn't have no, to that, do that. That's, that's I salute that because yeah. especially yeah. nowadays when you hear guys not being that stand up of a person. Yeah. You know. Wow. So yeah. as you transition <clears throat> through, you know, <clears throat> the high school, you said your 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 segue was into sports. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even know that I was a. What sport did you play? Basketball. Oh, okay. Play basketball, and um, well, how I met Coach Richardson was I was playing in the playgrounds when I was about twelve or thirteen. He said, "Who that little skinny kid over there can do this <laughs> and that? Who that guy? You know what I mean? I'm just playing." And then he pulled me in and you know coached me up, and and I just got better and better as we went along. And I grew. When he met me, I was a thirteen, like a five nine kid. I ended up being six six. Well, slow up, slow up. Score so. Rosenberg podcast, dropping jewels here. That's all <laughs> we. That's all we called it right now. So, you were five nine. Yeah. And transitioned to six six. Yeah. No steroids, no fertilizer. None no. of that. Natural. Straight genetics. <laughs> yeah, genetics. Dude, that, yeah. that's that's impressive. You know, as, as I hear your story, you know, we kind <clears> of <throat> are taking giant steps through some of the stuff I want to go through, because as you're walking through this period of your life mm -hmm. and I love the fact that you were ret retrospective on that view but as you're walking through that period you're saying was there one experience or one person that made an impact on your life to say listen I want to go that route mm -hmm. was there one person like that or one experience you could remember uh, did I saw did I say I want to be like that yeah well TV you know you got TV and so I watched my on Magic Johnson Okay. So he's my first idol. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to be like him. Watched him all the time, fanatically watched him, the Lakers through the 80s, and that's what I wanted to do. And that's why your m m initial skill was to go to basketball. Yeah. Of course, you had to hide also, so it was. Yeah, but who knew I was going to get that big? You know, I just played for fun. And then mm. it grew into a skill like that. And I grew in it and got better at it. But I didn't even know I wanted to be the basketball player I turned into. I just did it for fun. And okay. I came into my own. Score Rosenberg <clears throat> podcast. Here's what I want to get to. <clears throat> what was mom and grandma, grandma's perception as you're beginning to, you know, like play a little bit? Here? What were, are they supportive or are they like, dude, grab a book, stay focused, stay in school? Their whole rule was just graduate from high school because I was the first one in my family to even graduate from high school. Oh, big shout out to that, bro. Let's yeah, just lift yeah. these Heineken's yeah, and toast yeah. to that. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. So their big thing was just graduate from high school. They didn't even know about no sports stuff. They just knew I had to go to practice. Oh, all right, yeah, go ahead, have fun, you know. But make sure you graduate from high school. Well, I was like, graduate from high school. <clears throat> One little story I got about that. So when I graduated high school, you walk through the thing, had all the family come down. First thing my grandmother did was snatch my diploma out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> she snatched it from me. 
Me Why? too. Because <laughs> I was the first one in the family ever. That's the proudest moment of her life. So she just took it from me. Oh, so, so she saw me, hug me, here, give me that thing. Oh, she took it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What was, yeah. what was grandmother's name? Uh, Ethel. Big shout out to Ethel. Yeah. She, I think she graduated that day too. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's basically a lot of workers yeah. graduated that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, wow. So, so. It's, 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 it's fascinating because, you know, coming up in a, in a you know, woman powered home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, those other gentlemen that were, you know, in the society and in school yeah. were there for you as role model. <clears throat> were you. Uh, and I'm trying to be as straightforward as possible. You you accepted everything that was said. You didn't rebel at all. It was always well. I'm gonna tell you why. Because my grandmother was a no joke. <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> she said, "Be in the porch by ten. I'm on the porch at ten. I don't play them games." Cause she was a kind, old school, cursed like a sailor. No disrespect, but that's how she was. She didn't play, and I listened because I I see what my uncles went through with her. You know, she mm. my uncle or her son. He, he get in trouble. She ain't play, boy. She used to, I used to see the stuff he went through. I was like, I don't want none of that. So you just throwing like, shoes, pots, <laughs> all types of stuff was flying through the room. Big shout so, out to Ethel. Yeah. You know, because so, at the end of the day, you know, it takes a strong woman, you know, yeah. to develop, you know, a family yeah. period. You know? Right. So I am definitely a, a product of that. So you know, the, the the reason why I ask this question because when everybody listens to the way we, we may end up at the end of the con of the pod of the podcast. You might think, "Wow, they really went through the same stuff we went through." Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, the impact, you know. So it was very, very, you know, fascinating to hear the impact your your mom and your grandmother had on you. But as you transition from high school into college now, mm -hmm. right? Was and let me ask, which college did you attend, by the way? I went to two schools. I went to Keene University, and then I transferred okay. to St. Peter's University. Oh, nice. New Jersey City, yeah. Nice. Did you play basketball for you? Yeah. Well, Keen, I freshman year, I ended up being like rookie of the year in first team all conference. Then I transferred to a division one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow yeah. down, bro. Did you see fancy said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to sneak that by me, bro. I yeah, know who yeah. I'm sitting beside, bro. Let's just slow that up real quick. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? As a matter of fact, before we even get to those accomplishments or those, as a, why don't you repeat those titles that you just achieved? As a freshman, I was a rookie of the year in the conference. I was first team all conference. Oh, big. And then... Once I did that as a freshman, I was like 23 or something as a freshman, and that was only Division three level. So I'm like, <clears throat> if I'm doing this as a freshman, I think I can go transfer up and play with the guys with a little better competition. And I transferred to St. Peter's, which is Division one. Ooh. And, that's, and it all came from there. Let me ask you this. Do you remember the first game you were playing for the college? Was mom and grandma in the, in the audience? No, nah, no, nah, nah. they weren't there because the school was far away. You know, mom worked, grandmother didn't travel, you know, so I really was on my own up there. Just. But do you remember that first game? My first game at King, yeah, I remember. What was that like? I think I had like 30 or something like that, my first game. You said five very... dunks, yeah. <laughs> like nothing? Yeah, it was, because no, it was like I... natural, you know. I hadn't, because at this time I'm playing off strictly athletic ability. Oh. Not in order to skill of the game, the technique of the game yet. I was just playing. Oh, big, 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 yeah. big, big. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, Brian, yeah. forgive me for getting so hey, absorbed. Hey. It's part the, of the story, it, man. It is, it is, yeah, you yeah. Know, because what I'm so fascinated by is how we got here, you know, yeah. and the drive behind here. And I yeah. realize that everything that we experience in life is that ingredient to do that, you know. Yeah. So um, I ask you about that game because <clears throat> when you ran out onto the, the basketball court for that game, mm -hmm. you were just going to have fun, chill. Yep. What was the reaction? Did you see people reacting to the way you were playing? Maybe your skill set was a little bit more street swagger, more different. What, what was that like? I just or, or know did the excitement. You, did you notice it? Because when I played, I really didn't pay attention to the crowd. I just shut it out. I was the type of guy, I just shut everybody out. I didn't, you could say, talk to me, I would ignore it. I just canceled on focus on the game. I might talk a little trash to the guy I'm playing against, but as far as crowds, I just shut it out. Then after the game, I would know, oh, yeah, you you can play, you nice, this and that, but you know. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Big. Score Rosenberg podcast. <clears throat> Kicking back here with the designer of Tony Bellissimo. Yes. Correct? Let's get, yes. let's get the, the full name out there. Yeah. Exactly. My boy, Tony Walker, Brian Nelson, v Operations VP. Yes. Yeah, we're going to jump into a little bit more story about the whole connection and how they got together, how this is produced, and what the game plan is going forward, ladies and gentlemen. Score Rosenberg podcast. Stay tuned. One.
SQR podcast coming in to you as we rock out in the beginning of this segment two with my boy Tony Walker and of course Brian Nelson as we kick back you know we're just dissecting the life and the walk as you got to where you are right now and just really marinating on that movement you know mm-hmm. it's so interesting to hear because I'm always fascinated especially with you know when we go granular and hear her grandma and mom yeah really turned you into a man, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. So that's let me ask you this. So now you're playing, you make you, you have these accolades right into college. Yeah. I'm sure the girlies were coming at you like crazy, right? Yeah, that happens. <laughs> but how did you manage that? <laughs> I didn't. No, I respect that honesty. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to manage that. You know, you're just a young guy and all of it coming at you just absorb it as it comes. Literally. Literally. Wow. Yeah. What was the academics? I was a like a B minus student. Okay. Yeah. That means a C student, or you're being sure? No, like like if you do numbers, I was like a two eight. Okay. Like that, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I finished like a two eight, I think, when I graduated. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And um, graduation from college, what was that like? That was cool. That was cool. Grandma was still around. She didn't make it to the grad. My mom and everybody did, but she was still around at the time. Okay. She just didn't make it to the graduate from college, but she was still around. What was that day like? That was great because I never thought I'd be there. You know. Why? Came from the hood, you don't think you're gonna oh, make it out. Okay. Graduate. I didn't know nothing about college till February of my senior year. To be honest, like high school. What do you thought you were gonna do when you graduated high like school? Like join the military or something. Oh. So that's what all my uncles did. So I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go in the army or something. Okay. My boy said, you ain't going to college. I'm like, college? What do you mean? His mom. Like, well, you better get there and start making applications and find out what's going on. Because I wasn't a really highly recruited kid out of high school. Mm. So mm. when they told me that, I'm like, all right, let's see my guidance counselor. We just started making applications out. And bang. Okay, there it is. Wow. Yeah. I am, I'm very curious of, you know, because I know you and Max, you know, who was so instrumental for you sitting in the seat right now. Yeah. Big shout out to Max. Yeah. But um, how, when, when and how did you meet Max with... With the whole basketball affiliation. All right, so the summer, <laughs> <laughs> the summer after my graduation from St. Peter's, I'm going to go to play in the, uh, the uh, pro camps in Los Angeles. So we working out in the gym, and Max was in there rehabbing his knee. Okay. From I guess coming back from Maryland, he was going to go out to the LA too. We just started talking. He like, yeah, I'm going out there. I'm going out, yeah, I'm going. Blah blah blah. We start working out together. We've been friends ever since. That was what, 1991? Wow. Yeah. yeah, wow. Big shout out to that organic connection, bro. Yeah, that was Be- great. Yeah, because, you know, because of that, you know, you're sitting right here right now. Yeah. You know, about yeah. to explain and how and, and, and share with us, you know, the Tony Bellissimo line right now. Mm-hmm. And, as you know, people are always wondering, so who is this bodyguard sitting to my <laughs> left over here just, you know, looking so down. executive, you know, but, you know, Brian Nelson, um, operations. Yes. Vice President for Tony Bellissimo. How did this connection happen? Uh, or when did this connection happen? So when I got out of basketball, I did a career after basketball, so I went into management, uh, the music industry, rap, rappers and stuff like that. And I happened to, because um, I wanted to be a businessman after that because my degree was in business. Okay. So I booked some time in the studio. When I come to the studio, he's the engineer in the studio. So, when I'm in there, he was real business-like. So I'm watching him. He on point, watching the clock. We starting here, (laughs) we ending here. He wasn't letting us go over. I'm like, man, this guy right here, he on point, I like him. You know what I mean? I just started building a relationship with him, like, yo, I gotta get this guy down with him. Mm. So, I started talking to him, telling him what I was doing. He was interested in being rocking with me, and we've been rocking ever since. Let me ask you this. When you met this guy that day in the studio, because that's where you met in the studio, yeah, right? Yeah. Let me ask you this: You met this guy in the day in the studio. Did you, did you even realize he existed, or you were you just focused on, as you say, keeping everybody in line? You know, at that time, it was just he was just another face. He was just another appointment for me. Okay. You know, and the studio was busy at that time, so we had people coming in all the time, and everybody had a story. So you know, Tony was just one of the other guys that came in and. As he kept booking time and consistently, and then his artists I grew to like, you know, and wanted to help out, and it just started clicking, and the chemistry was just there, mm. and it just blossomed. 
Yeah, because I wanted to know what was it about him that stood out from the you know mirrors of other artists that are coming there with their passion dreams and you know their whole brand imaging, which is the music, the clothing. You know, you know what was about it that that made him stand out. Not only not only then when I first met him, but even to this day, Tony has his fingers on the pulse of what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, music, acting, clothing. He just had, he just had that, you know what I mean? And again, I said to this day, because there's times I'm like, yo, tell him, who's that? And be like, Come on, B, you gotta get together, you know, get it together. Oh, wow. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit more of the, not really nerdy type, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of an introvert, introvert at times. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So he keeps me exposed, and that's our yin and yang. Yeah. Oh, that's big. Yeah, that's man. Big. I, I, love, I, I love hearing that right there. Because at the end of the day, you know, you, you really don't know who, who's coming into your life to assist yeah. with that next step. Right. I tell you this much, you cannot do it alone. No. <clears throat> Score Rosenberg Podcast. I'm dropping a jewel on Score Rosenberg Podcast right now. You cannot do it alone. You need the support. You need a team behind you to even begin to get this moving. So as we get ready to, you know, jump into this, I want to understand um, what was that idea behind Bellissimo? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to create a brand. So I've seen all these rappers and actors always wearing Versace, Louis Vuitton, all this Dolce & Gabbana, expensive stuff and paying these high price points for it, right? Yeah, so I that. started doing my research and saying, well, they spending their money over there. How about a black-owned company bring some black excellence to the, to, the, to the business, get the same material, same fabrics, design beautiful stuff, just as good, but bringing the price point down a little bit lower to be a little more affordable. All right, so I, I don't want to jump around real quickly because my guests are wondering why and how is the transition from basketball to fashion? All right, well, it's basketball, music, yeah. then fashion. All right, so let's not miss the music step. Yeah, yeah. You weren't an artist, no. you were a manager. Manager and created a label. What's the name of the label? It was T2 Records at the time. Okay. So what I did, I transferred from being a manager to a CEO of a label. So at the time, I would, I did everything kind of like. Of course, you're building the sure empire. Artist, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the artist's image was right. The clothes they wore, I was on top of all that stuff. Mm. So when we finished with the music game, I said, you know what? I still know the clothes. I know the heartbeat, the fashion. I know what's going on. Why not bring my ideas to the forefront? And here we are. Wow, wow. <clears throat> I, I am being so microscopic with the journey because I want people to understand what it takes. You know, because in today's world, people think everything comes quick. No, no. You know, and I'm sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> far from quick. <laughs> Preach on that. Yeah, it's far from quick. This alone, we've been at three years to get to this point. Right. And we're just launching our brand into the marketplace now. For the first two and a half years, it was just building, finding factories, finding people we could work with, building the infrastructure to the yeah. business. Finding materials. All, yeah. All getting the stuff. right designs. Yeah. You know, what's going to be the right logo, making sure that the infrastructure was right so that when it is time to launch, we're not behind the eight ball and we're in front of the curve. True. True. You know, so th just getting that together, I mean, for us, it's words, you know, <laughs> we're, we're just explaining it, but there's a financial burden that goes along with all of that. You know, yeah. even the basics of starting your company, you know, building an LLC, you're coming out money. of pocket without making any money in, Yeah. you know? And with fashion, you're selling a product, Yeah. you know? So until that product is sold, you don't have money coming in, but you can't sell it unless your business is right. Mm, and that's, gonna, that's an investment in itself. In yeah. itself, yeah. You yeah, know, school, school Rosenberg Radio, you know, when, when people say something profound, we call it dropping a jewel. You, know, you just dropped a jewel right now on the podcast, you know, because you said you got to start investing in yourself to get mm -hmm. things going. Yeah. You know, and I think what the universe is saying is, let me see how bad you want this. You and know? you know what, not to cut you off, but I'm going to give you a quick jewel then, since you say that. When I was growing up, my grandmother used to say to me all the time, well, you better have your credit, right? Your credit. I'm like, what the heck is credit? What's she talking about? Your credit, grandmother right? was saying this. When I was 14, 15 years old, you better have your credit right. I'm like, what the heck is credit? She's talking about credit all the time. And you better save your money. And when, even when I worked, she would make me pay rent, but it would be $50 or something, yeah, $100. Yeah. 
this is make me pay. I didn't have to, but she did. And I'm like, why is she doing this? But she was setting me up how to pay bills, mm -hmm. out of credit. So fast forward to where we are, <clears throat> how we got started was I saved income tax for three years. Mm -hmm. The money from the income tax, <laughs> didn't touch it, didn't hit the bank, didn't touch it. Now everybody's going to blow it on clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> for three years, it took all my credit, took all my credit cards, and put all that in blasted us off from that and that's how we got started yeah. wow yeah impressive my dude <laughs> yeah yo i salute that I disciplined salute. yeah <laughs> not yeah. only impressive disciplined yeah i yeah. salute that i salute that because yeah. <clears throat> it takes that type of a movement to get this going yeah so as we get ready to close on this break i want we're gonna when we come back we're gonna jump into the name and everything else but as we get ready to segue out of this 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 segment right here the name tony bellissimo mm -hmm. why well, Tony is me, then Bellissimo is, means beautiful in Italian. So I figured I wanted to get a beautiful garment out there, so we used the, the name. And I asked him because his mother is Italian, so I'm like, B, you know, what's some Italian words that mean something? He would tell me, as his mom, whatever, she would tell us. Well, and I was like, Bellissimo, what does that mean? And they told me, I'm like, that's what we're going to go with. Yeah. And that's how we got it. Wow, Score Rosenberg Podcast. <laughs> My boy Tony Walker, Brian Nelson. Tony Bellissimo, we're gonna come back, jump into the brand, where we're going from here, and the impact we're about to make on this world. One. Rosenberg podcast coming to you as we get ready to rock into this, you know, interesting dissection on the the meaning and the movement behind Tony Bellissimo. Here, you you I, I love enjoying hearing the story. And you know, my wife just left, and she mentioned she's like, dude, you know, I love hearing about the fact that he was, you know, molded by his mom and his grandmother, you know. And she said, ask him was 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 church in that whole movement? Oh yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> you know, let's just sit up closer to the mic and let's talk uh, about that. What, what was that experience like, bro? <laughs> it was different because sometimes my mom would make me go to church by myself. She would. She would, like, maybe get up, put the suit on and everything. And, and go to church by yourself. Yeah, 12 years old. Big so, shout out to your mom. Yeah, and well, I'd be a kid in the church by himself. So let me ask you this. So the average kid is going to church, you know, they're in the back, they're distracted, they're not really focused. Did you really get the message or the movement behind why she wanted you to go to church and understanding that whole concept? Yeah, because not only in church, but she taught me around the house about, you know, spiritual things like that and, and be able to be in touch with God and stuff like that. So I knew what was going on. Maybe I didn't know the scriptures, the, deep, the depths of the scriptures, but I knew what was going on. The around. impact you had on your life. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why I ask, and my wife really put a bug in my ear because she was just inspired by your story, you mm -hmm. know, especially the fact that your grandmother made you pay that rent, which, <laughs> which, which got you into that, that routine of being, you know, being responsible financially. Yeah. And, um, you know, as, as we were talking, she mentioned uh, that appreciation versus rebelling against it. You know, where did that come from? Um, I just wanted something different. You know, just growing up where I came from, I seen a lot of stuff, a lot of bad stuff out there. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I you know, I wanted something different for myself. That's you had I, a reference point. Yeah. I, um, the reference point was the guys I told you about how they were. Clean cut men, you know, one was a teacher, but a coach and a teacher. Mm -hmm. Came to school sharp every day. Ooh. You know what I mean? 
I mean, perfect. And you, you, and you saw that. I saw all that when he was when he would be in school. This come on Coach Richardson. He would be in school, suit, tie. Teachers don't have to come like that every day. True. But he did. As a black man in the school, as a teacher, he came sharp every day. Like man, he's sharp every day. I think what's 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 interesting for me <laughs> is the fact that you noticed that, and uh, maybe yeah. because I know that you're in fashion now. Yeah. You know, it it kind of sparked that 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 thing in my head. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah, he would be per from the shoes all the way up every day. So, as you guys got together and in the studio, you guys connect. You mm -hmm. see that he's real. He's working with the product. What was the first project you guys worked on together? Um, or, or did it evolve into Bellissimo? No, no. Our first project was music. So we yeah. did. We had a girl named Red Rum at first. I know Red Rum. I don't, well, this was back in the nineties. I don't know. Dude, summer nineties. <laughs> 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 go in, in, go in. Go in. And um, our first big project for her was I grew up with the guy Echo, Mark Echo. He's okay. from he's from my hometown. Oh wow! And how I'll give you a little tidbit on that. When he first got started, I seen his artwork on. He do the spray art with the um. So I was like, man, he dope, right? So I was like, yo. What if you put that on T-shirts or jeans and we take them to the hood and sell them? He's like, all right. He was a kid, little nerd, white kid, didn't come to the hood. So we would go in the hood and sell his shirts and stuff for him. Oh, wow. And then and that's it, how that started? That's how Echo started. So yeah. what happened was <clears throat> he had six T-shirts he did to start off. All right, hold on. I think, I think I'm missing something here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to pull this by me. Here's what we're going to do. When you said we – were you – Instrument, were you a part of that initial team? Yeah, I still got my business cards and everything from first days of Echo. The first days. Like, I used to sit in his house with him and live with him, like, yo, and brainstorm what we could do to make it work. And recently, just showed me a jacket that Echo had did from him. Yeah, his still got it. Back of a jacket. Still has it dated. Everything. Echo signed everything. Yes, the jacket yeah. he did, the jean jacket he did for me back in the day. Before there was, Before Echo it was Unlimited a or Echo anything. Or I still got it. Yeah. I, I don't want my listeners to miss the whole movement <laughs> yeah, around a, right here. Yeah, not going on. But yeah, yeah, no. But it, but it also shows a constant movement into yeah. your passion. Yeah, you know, and that's what people don't need, people need to understand. So, I can tie that into the music. So when Mark first, so we did that. Went to Atlanta to Jack the Rapper selling shirts. I mean, I oh, shirt shirts. Really? Yeah, well, I mean, there. down there with Tupac and all of them. Gave him Tupac shirt, side the board. Too short, everybody. But Death Row first started giving Dad Snoop. All we was with all these guys selling shirts and giving them shirts and stuff. And um, so what we did, what Mark wanted to do when he put the shirts in the store, he back then he had the cassettes. So he wanted he partnered with Lyricist Lounge in New York. Remember Lyricist Lounge? Yeah. yeah. So Lyricist right. Lounge had one side of the tape. Echo had one other side true, of the tape. True. True. My true. artist was the star of Echo's side of the tape. Red so, Rum. Yes. So she did a rap for him on his side of the tape. And Brian engineered that whole yeah, tape. The whole tape of for for the first echo. Me and Mark said it for what? 24 hours, yeah. knocking this thing out. Yeah, I do remember that tape. <laughs> no, I I, I, yeah. I I swear I do remember that tape. Yeah, he had on every T-shirt he sold in stores. Yeah. Well, we he engineered that whole I tape. Engineered the whole thing for him. And my artist rapped on that first tape. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. So we once we did that, you know, Mark went in and he did his business, whatever he did, and as it grew. I guess the guys that helped him get it together kind of faded away. I went into music, and he, they kept going, you know. So plus, plus when he grew and the money started getting involved, the hometown boys can't be clinging on or whatever. Yeah. Whatever will happen behind biz, I don't know. But we fade. We went into the music side of things. That's when me and Brian carried on. Yeah. And that's that was our first real big project we did. Mm. Yeah. Which, I, which is I'm promoting Red Rum going 100 percent on behind her, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did Definitely. that. We did lyricist lounge with her. We did a bunch of stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do remember those those good old yeah. days, bro. Yeah, man. You know, and I'm sure he's in the back reminiscing because you know you worked for Tommy Boys back in the day. You oh, know, okay. Your activity, okay. You know. I used to run up in Tommy Boy all the time. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to be in this dude, this A and R guy named Kevin used to work there. Yeah, Kevin Lyles, right? Yeah, I used to be in there all the time with tapes. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin, yeah. like, nah. Very yeah, small dude. world as, yeah. we, as as we we pull this in. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So, Bellissimo came to fruition when? About three years ago. So like I said, you know, once we got done with the music, me and Brian was like, well, I was like, we gotta do something else. We can't just 
turn into nine to fivers, man, that ain't us. We got the entrepreneur thing going on. So I like, we're gonna go into um, fashion. We're gonna just take what we know, we're gonna go into this, and I'm gonna, my ideas, and I started shooting them to him. And he knows the Photoshop thing, he started throwing some t-shirts together. And that's how we started. And I said, yo, what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna save all the money I get on the income tax and never spend it. And we're gonna take that, and we're gonna take the credit I got from the credit cards, and we're gonna blast this thing off. And that's how we did it. Mm. And yeah. right now, your team that's behind you is promoting Bellissimo 100%. 100%. Yep. Yep. What are you looking for? Looking for? Right like, now, in terms of distribution, placements, or where you are right now? Um, well, we got the, our own distribution. Everything is 100% us. Dis distribution, marketing, everything we do on our own. But we're looking for placements, you know, get guys to wear, wear the shirt we gave you. Oh yeah, we're um, definitely gonna represent yeah, this we just podcast. Gotta, we're gonna represent this. I like I like how it matches what we're wrapping right here, yeah. which is you know, so we're definitely gonna exchange our shirts and blast this off. But this is also gonna be available on our SQR podcast store where you can, you know, get definitely get that. Oh that'd be cool. Yeah, we definitely yeah. put that up right there. Yeah. As we get ready to wrap, you know, I, and it's so fascinating hearing your story because I realize your journey was not only through sports, you know, as you pass through through college. And getting here and realizing, listen, you know, doing music and just reinventing yourself, for yeah. lack of a better word. Yeah. You know, I really respect that because a lot of people, the first obstacle they get into, they give up and back away. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, you know, you guys coming together, working. I'm very impressed by that story. One of the questions I, 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 I insistently close with is this. And because it's both of you here, I am going to give you one of the, because it's two questions, a two-part mm -hmm. question, and I'm going to give you both. You'll answer one, you'll answer one. The question is, you have a magic wand, right? And you can make an impact on this world. What would that impact be? I'm gonna start with you. I would, I would definitely love to see everybody really just get along. You know, there's a lot of madness going on. If we could help each other, be there for each other, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Really take care of each other because, you know, we let politics get into the way of what we're really here for, to care for one another. <clears throat> you know, even as we do Bellissimo, we want to give back. We want to help out the communities. We want to be that coach, you know, for not only just the young blacks, but for anybody who needs the help. Mm. So my magic wand would be to help in that area where we actually care for each other. Very profound. No, I respect that. And, you know, we, we, we didn't even really get a chance to tap into your story, but with an answer like that, that was major jewels right there on Score Rosenberg podcast as you dropped that in. And you're right, because if we were able to do that, this whole dynamic will completely change. Completely change. Thank you so much, my friend, for dropping yeah, that. It's been a pleasure being here, man. Yeah, no doubt. Tony, um, you have the magic wand. You can make an impact on this world. What would that be? I don't know if mine would be a more of a worldly answer, but since I came from this, I would like to have something perfect for single parent households with the, <clears throat> the mothers by themselves with children and need help, whether it's childcare or financially or after school programs or, you know, even babysitting for them when they say they can go to work, mm. stuff like that. I would love to do something like that no I respect that because yeah. you came from that kind of environment yeah. so you know exactly know what's missing yeah you know I, I salute that and you know the the <clears throat> I'm fascinated by the word beautiful in Italian on your design here and you had mentioned how that came together where that was your you know your partner here is um, Italian heritage I'm half, yeah half black half Italian and you know, you said, "Boom! I want to, tr you know, give me something that will work." And boom, here comes the name, beautiful. And both your answers to those questions were bellissimo. Right? Yeah, yeah, they were. So I want to, I want to definitely compliment you for being here. Thank you so much, Thank you. Tony Walker, <laughs> product of bellissimo. Yeah, guys, you're gonna be available to catch our stuff on our YouTube channel. You're gonna see this, hear this on our SoundCloud. We're definitely gonna have their stuff up on our on our store on the Facebook. We're gonna kick back, relax, just you know, enjoy the true grit of what it takes and always share and always expand and know that there's people there in your corner to support you to help you get your dream. SQR Podcast, Tony Walker, Brian Nelson, Bellissimo, one. <laughs>